it's been a long time since updating anyone. I've come, I have really come full circle back to certain beliefs that my mind had trouble <laughs> with through my awakening. This morning I went on a journey. I had a headache. <laughs> I just saw someone I know. <laughs> Situation that I didn't know how I got my 
that I was holding on to, all the problems, the business stuff, the ideas that never went anywhere, the traumas of the anger, the big problems that, are, that were problems before this surrender, everything was just... I could see we were all in connected and it was all beautiful. It was not a right or wrong thing. It was like this realization of creating this, being a part of this, how grateful we are to be a part of this, the magic of it. I, I, it's indescribable. The love me so much that it poured out of me onto everything and that love that unconditional love not you know, it was a pure love purity that love I don't know how long it lasted it, it could have only been a couple of days but I feel like it was a couple of months and it might have been a couple of weeks you know it had lingering qualities and I lived life that way. I was going through life just loving everything and just feeling this oneness. I had no idea what was to come after this. <laughs> um, but once I lost the experience, as in it wasn't a permanent fixture, I'm still going to my job, I'm still, you know, it was a life-changing experience, both of them, but it was, it put me on the path of, wow, human potential and possibility and how beautiful it was. And it was so more real than this. It was so more real. And then I really wanted it back. So when I no longer had it, I felt a little lost. I felt like looking for it, like trying to figure it out. One, I wanted to know what it was. Um, I, you know, looked up religion and spirituality, and I knew it was something related to a reality that I'd never experienced. It expanded me in some way. It put me on the path of seeking. Um, it was very healing. I, like from that death experience, I don't know if I died. I don't know if, you know, some other aspect of my soul came in and to complete this journey, but I was a different person. And then I healed myself. And then I felt this love for everything. And nothing was bad, nothing. I, I just, I could see the beauty in all of it. And, 
even after that faded, went away, when I no longer felt like direct connection to whatever it was that was pouring love into me and out to everything, like I saw creation as if it was mine and it was all perfect. And I, looking up that, you know, trying to find other people who have had that, the closest thing is um, people having, you know, a spiritual awakening or uh, Christ consciousness or... That's all I can think of at the moment. It's the same. And then what came next was dark. No. No, no, no. So then I was, I was searching, I was searching for truth and I wanted to know what this was. I wanted to tap back in. I wanted and knew that we could heal this reality that we're experiencing that no one needed to suffer if they had this bottle of bliss, you know, if I could bottle up how I could feel and give it to everybody, I, I wanted to, everyone who was suffering to realize they didn't need to suffer, it was all perfect, it was all absolutely perfect the way that it was, and then I was researching everything, I was going down rabbit holes, I'd never gone down, and I felt so grateful that I hadn't died, you know, that I hadn't missed out on all this infinite possibilities that I'd never even realized were even there, you know, I didn't see, I even know, even, so everything that I used to care about no longer held any interest for me, no care about money or, you know, gaining money and um, ego stuff went away and lots of lots of changes and transformations. I went all completely um, raw. I didn't put any chemicals on my skin. I uh, filtered my water. I, I wanted that purity back and I knew how to get it. And I healed myself and then I started helping people with the healing because I thought that this was my path. And um, then uh, one night I was laying down and I had this I really wanted to, just truth, you know, I was just truth seeking and I was listening to this um, Seth video while I was trying to sleep, I needed to work in the morning so I was in between sleep, like, you know, forcing myself to go to bed early, um, even though I wasn't ready kind of thing and then trying to sleep and then I had this, like, I was suddenly in a room and the room was full of infinite knowledge. Anything, any, all the answers were there. You, you think of an answer and you knew, 100%, you knew what the answer was. There was no questions unanswered in this room. It was the answers. It was the download of everything. It was access to all knowledge. And... I don't know how long that lasted, maybe a couple of minutes. And I was so excited about that that I raced out of the bed and went straight to the laptop and started to try and type up everything that I'd learnt in those few minutes, which was so much. It was infinite. It was everything. And I couldn't write it down. It was, like, so clear to me and then nothing came. It was being taken away from me, and then I was thinking that, well, what's taking this away from me? Why would you do this? The, the world needs to know this. And the only thing that I remembered from the whole thing was speak your truth, and the truth will be revealed. Everything else was sort of, I, I remembered bits and pieces in hindsight, and um, I recorded that somewhere, but it was an amazing experience that also changed my life. Then I wanted answers and I wanted back in. <laughs> so now I wanted answers to everything and I wanted to tap back into whatever that was. Now the similar things that I could find with other people who have been there is it might have been the Akashic Records, but I don't know. I don't know. that. I don't know. And I've never been back. And 
then came um, this is all over a period of years so the next spiritual awakening was the dark night of the soul and I didn't know it <laughs> so with all this information that I got this love experience this unconditional love experience this major life transformation of healing and then I never thought that I just I still had these beliefs from these experiences I was still walking through life with these beliefs but I wasn't um, prepared I wasn't informed I didn't know what was really going on like I had no one around me to talk to I didn't have you know 13 years experience with preparing me for this it was like just popping open and all of this new stuff was available just because I asked for it and I want to say that like I think the first questions that that opened up all this was who are we why are we here you know what are we doing here is there a purpose for all this all that kind of crying out when I was going through the pre worst part of my life <laughs> like asking if there's any life after death and what is the point of all this suffering and blah 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 so that was before the death experience but anyway so now that you've got the dark night of the soul and I've still got these beliefs that I love everyone that everything is perfect everything is good and now when I see other people are going through that phase I feel sorry for them because I know what's coming if <laughs> I don't know if it's going to happen to all of them but then becomes this um, Oh, I decided to do this um, experiment where oh yeah because I was going doing it's getting really hot in here I might try and do the rest in the house All right. now I've got to try and remember where I was up to but it was just a journey showing me like snapshots of these experiences I've had over the last five years that have shaped everything that's come into my life from then on um, before the dark night I was starting to experience instant manifestation and this was a freaking high and I did feel very very powerful and very like we create this reality and instant proof of such things and where I was getting the validation from is like I would sit at the cafe and I would scan around and I would go, I would, I'm going to get that person to sit next to me and have a cup of coffee with me. And I would do it just with my intention. Um, there was many different little things, even when I was just putting it out there. The next Thing was the dark night so basically how I got into that is that I was still starving for truth starving to know what was really going on trying to understand those experiences and then I was putting it out there like I was non-stop like a syringe in my bloody veins non-stop watching and trying to find validation from everywhere I was into um, Tom Campbell and his virtual reality theory um, parallel realities different dimensions I wanted to know how I could heal how I healed myself and um, why I saw the things I did why I felt the way that I did um, I was getting into all the spiritual things I was into uh, Bentino Massaro I was into David Icke and his Archon theory that was kind of scary and put me down a different rabbit hole into conspiracy theories and um, Dolores Cannon Abraham Hicks, pretty much every teacher from The Secret at some stage, but that was even prior to all of this. Non-stop podcasts, webinars, documentaries, you name it, I was just non-stop researching for months and months and months and months and months, whether I was asleep or awake. So even when I was asleep, I was listening to audio. When I was awake, I was watching the watching videos 
When I was driving, I was listening to podcasts. When I was, there was no, there was no um, integration time. I just wanted to know everything that I didn't know. I just got open to this whole new world that I didn't know anything about, and I had valid proof that it existed. And he put me on the path of that. And I, I was into like, did I? Was I a um? What was it? A walk in, you know. It was so. It was so different to who I was before that. I just, I wanted answers and I wanted to know the truth and I knew that I would get to it. Uh, but in this, um, you know, this start of this um, instant manifestation thing, um, and I was feeling the most healthiest vital, you know, that I'd ever been in my life. I'd felt so strong and healthy and um, open and loving and just a completely different person than the one that I was before the king fell down. And then I decided to do an experiment. Oh, yeah, that fucking experiment. So then I realized that the instant manifestation was only a limit to my beliefs. I knew that. There were so many different, like even I would imagine myself walking into the, um, the shopping center and everyone had changed. And it did. It, there were so many, like, the world was so different and I was directing the show and I was so, I, I was so convinced I was. And then I thought, well, if I lift the roof on my limitations, because I know that my limitations is the boundary to where I can go, then what is possible? What is possible if you can lift the limitations? So I decided to do an experiment. I know I was experimenting before that anyway. But this was like this huge super experiment that I knew that I shouldn't do um, because it's just something that humans don't do. <laughs> but I would lift the lid on all that's possible and go into that, whatever that came out of that. And I put the intention out there that I just wanted the truth to everything. I wanted the truth to the universe. I, I, and I was so knowing, knowing that I needed to trust that I was lifting the lid that I was open to whatever came, that I had faith that it was all, like, possible to experience this infinite thing. It's like, like thinking about it now, it sounds so crazy, but it was, it was something I just, like, I needed to do this. I needed to find the answers. I needed, I needed the truth. I wanted a shortcut. I wanted to get there now. I wanted all the answers now. And I wanted to get the answers so that I can help everybody with it, so that I could know how to erase suffering from humanity because it didn't need to be there. But I didn't know, I didn't have all the answers. <laughs> so I did this experiment and the very next day, and I'm still floating around like I'm this airhead you know, floating around just in this amazing um, ego trip where I thought anything was possible and I'm there, you know, that I could do anything and that it was infinite, these, um, these things that we can do as a human and, and I'm floating. I'm absolutely just in love with life and I manifest this, um, this guy and I did not know at that time that he would be the opening to hell the gates of hell for me I had no idea but I was in such a trippy place a place that no human had ever been and so trusting of the experiment and whatever allies were directing me to do these things you know even though I didn't know really any of these spiritual experiences that I had were um, you know, where it was coming from or anything, but I felt it was good. I felt I was there to help people. I felt like I was a angel, you know, that, that all this stuff, and especially with the Dolores Cannon stuff, we're talking about the new earth, and um, there, was, there was so many, you know, Bashar and all this. Um, I was choosing the validation, you know, like I was choosing what I wanted to know and what I wanted to be and what, did I, what I wanted for this world and... And I was getting the validation from other YouTubers and 
I was so convinced. And um, then this guy has ended up being just the opposite of everything I believed. The absolute opposite. And I couldn't. I, I didn't know if I was there to help him, if I was there to save him, if I was there to face my fears, like all this stuff was coming up. I was like, well, maybe or maybe he's so dark and so twisted like this because I need to deal with that. Like there's obviously things in me that I haven't dealt with or whatever, but I think what the dark night is, is, is everything that you, that is not pure, that you have to, you have to deal with everything that's not pure, that's not, that's, that's in you as darkness and negative and like the worst of the worst, the worst of the worst, whatever you can imagine to be the absolute worst possible thing, that, that is what you have to deal with in the dark night. There's like you, like the king in the corner again, you, the pawns are everywhere and they're all your shadow. It's all this stuff, this undealt with childhood stuff, this the horrors of the world, it's pedophilia, it's incest, it's grotesque, it's the worst of the worst. And in my mind, my egotistical mind, I'm still manifesting, I'm still in love with it, everybody's souls and I'm here to help them and and then I'm I'm like, well, I'm really scared and I don't know how to deal with this. So I'm thinking that I'm put there because I'm the only one that could understand. I'm the only one in the world that could possibly have compassion for these things that are coming up, that is understanding, that accepts everything, that can see creation as this magnificent, you know, magnificent, beautiful thing. And I'm in this experiment not realizing that this experiment is just destroying me. But at the same time, what the journey showed me this morning, it was showing me this... Um, this path that I needed to go through, it, it showed me that if you deal with all this dark stuff, like it forced me, it forced me to, there was nowhere else to go. I couldn't talk to people about what I was doing because I knew that that sounded nutty. I was doing the YouTube things thinking like that I'm about to help people. I'm, I'm two months away from taking off in the van and, and sharing this bliss. I've got this whole business plan set out and how I'm going to help raise the vibration of this planet and basically I thought that I was on this mission to help people get rid of the suffering and raise up and raise up and raise up and experience this bliss. <laughs> and, um, you know, <laughs> this is where I was at before and I was too happy, too healthy, too out there, but too, too much. <laughs> Dancing in the street and just singing on the highway and blissful. And it, that was so different than who I was that I, I it was confronted with that as well. I was confronted with people who knew me before this bliss. I was confronted with my own versions of me before this bliss, you know, this is out of character and all that kind of stuff, but I was just on such a high and I never wanted to let it go. And then when it, the unconditional love left me and I, I still felt like I could tap into it and and help people and um, it was it was an ego trip because I thought you know that I was special and it was a a wake-up call because it now now I had to humble myself because there was no way out of this like I was putting myself in situations I would never never put myself into I was saying things I would never say I was letting people cross my boundaries I had no boundaries because we were all one, <laughs> you know, I, there was no boundaries. Boundaries, that's that's so 3D, you know. We're all one. There's no boundaries. There's no separation. We are one, blah, blah, blah. And so I've got all these beliefs that I've taken on, that I've validated myself and that I've, that I think, and then, and then the universe is showing me the darkness. Oh, I would never wish it upon anyone. I wouldn't wish it upon the devil. <laughs> There's just so much darkness. And then 
I, the people that I thought that I could turn to in such times were telling me about demons and negative entities and, and um, um, they were bringing in the darkness basically. I was living in fear, but I was trying because my ego was still living in this love instant manifestation thing. I was trying to see the best in everybody because I was like, if I start thinking negative about this situation, then that's what I'm going to manifest. I knew how it worked, and I knew that if I took on their way of looking at things, that everything would go bad. But then it was implanted in me because this is what was happening. All this walking through the hell, the fires of hell, and I. There was just, I couldn't, like, I'm like, but I want to, I'm, I'm happy, I'm a good person, I'm a happy person, I'm an angel, you know, <laughs> and um, it was, oh, God, that was the hardest thing to go through, hardest thing, and I think up until a few weeks ago, I was still on the tail end of that, you know, even after, oh my God, it was the biggest lessons of my life, and the biggest transformation inside, because I was forced to deal with all my past issues because I thought I was crazy. I know, and yeah, that's another thing. I questioned everything. Now I'm like, well, if there are beings that are helping me and people directing the show right now, they've led me into hell. So I didn't trust them. They had to be turned off. So I went through all these rituals to cut them off. No fucking communication for infinite amount of times. No. You know, no matter, through infinity, you've got a no contact rule, basically. I turned off all my guidance. Um, there was people making YouTube videos about me saying I'm crazy and I've got to get settled and balanced and I've still got victim mentality and all that kind of stuff. And then I turned into that. So I was like, I, there was, it was such a full circle thing to get back to this self-mastery belief because that, if you have dealt with all your shit, then you can't be knocked off balance. If you have boundaries of what is in alignment to you and your soul and what feels right for you, and you put a boundary and don't allow people to push you out outside of your own integrity, then this wouldn't have happened. If I wasn't experimenting with something that I really shouldn't have been experimenting with because it already sounded like a like an impossible challenge. Not that I don't believe it. I believe it. It happened. But it, but if I hadn't, I, I hadn't dealt with my shit first. I didn't even know I had shit anymore. I was blissful. <laughs> I was like, just freaking la la land. I um and I'd healed myself. Like I knew that we were creating all this. I knew it. And even though everybody in my daily life. They, they didn't get what I was saying, deer in headlights, you know, they didn't understand. But even though they didn't know, I knew that I could help them. I knew that I could, I could raise their vibe. I could help them somehow tap into this bliss. But now I'm, I don't know, now I'm like that journey this morning that showed me all these different experiences that, that just transformed everything. Um, God, so much has changed, my beliefs, my, you know, I, when I was going through the dark night, I didn't trust anyone, trust that, you know, the invisible allies, the people around me, they all became dark and betrayal. The nicest people hurt me real bad. They did. They were, they were what I considered the, the good people of this world and they really hurt me the most because I expected more from them. And they allowed me to be in this situation, and I was just like, well, fuck, if I can't trust the good guys, I can't trust myself, I can't trust my own intuition, I can't, and I'm driving to work, and I'm thinking, I shouldn't be driving. You know, and this is another thing. I don't think anyone going through a spiritual awakening should be fucking working at a day job. <laughs> I really don't. They need freaking nurturing and understanding and clarity and and time to integrate and time to allow all this all this darkness from the entire planet to go through them you have to deal with the darkness of the entire planet the the, the entire experience of creation 
And I don't think a lot of people make it. I don't think a lot of people make it. If they don't think it's a spiritual awakening, I thought like, hmm. I had this knowing that it was a spiritual awakening and I had so much self-doubt because of everything that it transpired that I was like, it could be that I'm just delusional. And I, and you know, one of the YouTubers said it was a psychotic episode and I looked that up and I sounded like I matched those bullet points, you know, oh, it could be a psychotic episode. Then I, then I really didn't trust myself. I'm going through, well, God, don't talk to me. No one talked to me. You know, I wasn't the light anymore. I was the, the please avoid me. Please don't come near me. I am not to be trusted. You know, like don't, don't be infected by whatever is infecting me. And I, and I looked at, you know, the demons and the entities and all that kind of stuff. And they, they, that all resonated and the psychosis resonated and the spiritual awakening resonated and the, the, um, the I'm crazy resonated. Um, and I really needed grounding, but that was the last thing that I wanted to do when I was going on my high. So when I was in my high, I really needed to be grounded, but grounding, what? You're going to take all these abilities away from me? Like, no, I want, I want more. I want more of this, not less, you know? Um, but yes, getting grounded was the best fucking thing that ever happened. <laughs> um, I had to, like, I was living off pure foods, clean foods. Um, and that's how I got so healthy and stuff. But I had to get dirty with my foods and go back to, you know, fast food and coffee and um, sugar and junk and stuff like that just to get normal because all I wanted now was to be normal. I didn't want to be crazy. I didn't want to be spiritual. I wanted my logical person back. But you can't plug yourself back into the matrix after you've been unplugged. Once you see all these different perspectives and there's infinite I've written so many A4, you know, notepads full of these different circumstances that I've been through and each one of them is written from a different perspective. There is just infinite ways of experiencing this reality. And um, I don't know what this, um, this journey is. I don't know where it's going, you know, but this is, this is what I was showing this morning, these, these big life-changing events that I can't explain that have changed me from this, you know, from logic, money hungry to the king falling over to, you know, despair and then to pure unconditional love for everything to um, the knowledge of everything to questioning everything, especially myself. And I'm not now, I don't know of any truth. I know that we don't die. That might be the only truth I know. That we are souls experiencing this human experience. Or not even, we're, we're like shapes. <laughs> Geom geometric shapes. Dots experiencing this. My camera got full. <laughs> so I had to, and I wasn't sure how much I was yabbering before it, before it stopped recording. So I had to empty the phone out on the thing and I thought I'd do some laundry. Um, so where was I up to? Oh yeah, I know that we don't die and I, and I know that's pretty much all I know. And I have different ideas depending on what day it is as to who we are, what we're here for, what our purpose is, all that kind of stuff. But I am leaning now towards, um, we are here to just experience different perspectives that we play out our perspectives. There's infinite perspectives to play out. The experience that we get is the, the gold and that we do want to ever improve. And I think the, the spiritual awakening th thing is, um, and the dark night that was, huh, <laughs> they are that part of it like unless look I wish it wasn't but I don't know I don't know how we can improve 
the experience for everybody. Like I think we just took it too far, and in, in not even too far, but it's time to to change it so that it's more of a uh, more of a benefiting from our experience now, rather than just creating whatever um, experience and just living on default and just seeing how it goes. Like you can create your reality. But part of the mastering of the self, which is another reason why we're here, is this dealing with um, infinite lives of what we don't want to create or something. There was so much I wanted to say, but I, because I think I got stopped in the middle of it that I've gone uh, for the moment. But um, I'm working on my business again. I've come full circle around to um, believing in, you know, infinite perspectives and creating our own reality. Um, I do believe that if you're going through yourself, your spiritual awakening, any one of them, that you shouldn't be around anyone that hasn't been through it. Um, and I think that that's why I need to bring this business out to the public, I need to make sure that I have some other way for people to make a living so that they can deal with their shit, so they can deal with the stuff that's going to come from this, and so that they can share their gifts and, and share what they're learning and share their experiences and share the things that are helping them. And if they've had support, which I didn't have, but if they've got like support from other people who have been through it, they've got tools and things that you can use to to get through some of these things but I think that me I just rushed it so much I wanted everything and I wanted and I needed to close it down to to integrate and work out whether I was crazy and I was because I was in just a like I couldn't I didn't know what was going on and I didn't know if it was valid and I wasn't I was thinking if if I can't trust myself then I can't do anything and I and I didn't so I stopped doing the business because I was like well I don't want to lead anyone else down the dark path I don't want anyone else to experience this well now that I've been through it at least I can help shed some light on the things that that I did learn that was so valuable out of that but I would not have been able to do it without the I Ching um, I wouldn't have been able to do it without the I Ching but that's not to say that that, that route is for anyone for everyone or anyone going through it but for someone that had nothing and no one to turn to and no one that would understand and any everyone was telling you crazy i needed to get grounded and that's what it did like it it showed me a better way of looking at things it gave me better perspectives things that were more benevolent than the the vengeance that i was feeling inside the anger from being so betrayed so misunderstood no one understood and i was so just drawn by that that no one understood but I couldn't get grounded either like I was just all over the place I'm like I was just a freaking train wreck and I shouldn't have been recording videos um while going through the dark night but I didn't know what a dark night was you know I didn't know what that was I thought that I was just you know experiencing a little bit of depression or a bad day that lasted years but I didn't know that it was a it was going to continue until I, you know, I thought I was just thinking different. Like my whole thinking had to change to get through that. And so on, you know, in hindsight, I wish I hadn't have recorded videos when I didn't understand what was going on. I'm also grateful that I recorded videos because there's um, other people that probably would have experienced these wacky fucking things as well. And even though I couldn't mention some of the dark stuff that I was going through because people in my everyday life were the reflection mirror shadow, so I couldn't mention everything that was going on because they could see these videos potentially if they wanted to, if they were cur curious enough, if they knew that I had a blog, if they knew I had a YouTube channel. And so I couldn't even, I couldn't mention all the dark stuff that was going on that was really going on because I wanted to protect them um, and I didn't understand like I was still trying to see the higher 
way of looking at everything, like me to sacrificing my own ego, sacrificing my um, reputation in the world to protect them, to save them, which is what I thought my role was. I had no boundaries. I have boundaries now. I'm very grounded now. And I don't have... There was this thing that was always in my stomach, like a a thing, a heaviness that was always in my stomach. My whole life I've had that. I never remembered a time that I didn't have that, so I thought it was normal. That's not there. I don't have fears. I have no fear of death. I have no fear of... The only, um, the only fear I have is when I'm put in situations where I can't feel free to be me, which is a lot of the time, and... I'm pressured by something to defend my beliefs. And like, so now while I'm feeling free to express the journey that I had this morning, which was giving me a perspective of these big life changing events, I feel fine. If I were to um, have conversations with friends or random people that I meet, about these experiences, I would be fine. But put in a situation where I'm not sure, like when they instant snap judge that these experiences weren't real kind of thing, and there's something for me to work on because when I'm in those situations, I'm not, I feel like, oh, well, they don't understand and that bothers me and it shouldn't because if, if it's my truth, it's my truth. And um, I, I don't feel bothered by it now. Maybe I've already passed it, but I doubt it. You know, I don't know. Yeah, so I'm going to focus on the business and the business will bring, you know, a way for light workers and, th and people going through the spiritual awakening and dark nights and all that kind of stuff to make a living online so that they can go within and work on their shit <laughs> and work on all this stuff so that they get rid of all the darkness in them, they get rid of that ball that they've got in their stomach, they get rid of their fears and suddenly they're a clearer... Um, vibration that is changing one person at a time the frequency that we're all experiencing on this planet as in even if the um, spiritual stuff was actually hokey pokey we are all experiencing this world as a basis because of our beliefs and things that we've been told that we've taken on and we're experiencing that the reason why you walk past that homeless person is because you feel okay in your culture to be able to do that. In some cultures, that would be just horrific that you'd do that. There's a cultural, there's so many different, you know, overlays and st stuff like that that we're experiencing. We're perceiving through these perspectives that we've been told, that have been told on, that beliefs that we've had every time we've been betrayed, when we hate the world and we hate everybody and we hate ourselves most of all <laughs> you know, mistakes we've made and doing things wrong and oh god there's just so much to this human experience there's just so much and i don't think anyone's there i think we're actually all here because we're not there <laughs> we're all here because we're learning something we're always from wherever we are we're always learning growing evolving from wherever we're at and there's always just infinite ways of looking at the same situation rather than get into that at this time i do want to shut up now and get stuck back into the business so that i can um like launch it soon that would be good launch it in april yeah i will hopefully okay see ya <laughs>